and the City of Sioux Falls Planning Commissions. And I'm going to begin with a few uh, introductory comments. The two planning commissions work together on land use and zoning matters within the rural areas surrounding the city. This area is displayed on the screen. After information and testimony is presented on an agenda item, the members will discuss the matter, then each planning commission will vote independently to arrive at a decision. A final action taken on the continu continual use permit request will take effect by working days following this meeting unless a written appeal of tonight's decision is filed in the County Planning Office by Monday, February 4th, 2019 at 5 p.m. In the event of an appeal, the decision will be referred to the County Commission and City Council for a joint hearing on Tuesday, February 26, 2019 at 5 p.m. This meeting is held in Carnegie Down Hall at 235 West 10th Street. Action re regarding this rezoning item will be automatically heard by the County Commission and City Council for joint at a public hearing on Tuesday, February 26 at 5 p.m. Um, first on the agenda is public input. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to an item that is not on the agenda? At this time, the Planning Commissions will consider the consent agenda. Items on the consent agenda are perceived to be non-controversial and meet all of the requirements of the codes and regulations. The consent agenda will be acted on in one motion with no public hearing on the items unless the member of the public, the commission, or staff request the item to be removed from the consent agenda. The minutes from the November 26, 2018 meeting are included in the consent agenda. Does any Planning Commission members wish to have any item removed from for discussion? Next, I will read each item on the consent agenda and ask if there are any issues or comments from the staff or the audience. If any member of the staff or audience would like to be heard on the item, please raise your hand. Then the item will be moved to the regular agenda to allow you to address the commissions later in the meeting. And then any other, any other items remaining on the consent agenda will be approved by the Planning Commission with the conditions recommended by staff. The first item on the consent agenda is the approval of minutes of the November 26, 2018 meeting. Item number two is condi conditional use permit 19-03 to amend CUP 17-09 to exceed 1,600 square feet of total accessory building area requesting 2,480 square feet and to retain all existing buildings on the property legally described as Track 49, West Acres, Southwest Corridor, Section 17, Township 101 North, Range 50 West. The petitioner is John McCarthy. He's also the property owner. And the address is 46715 Buckeye Street, it's located approximately one mile west of Sioux Falls. Okay, so neither of those items. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve it. Second. Second. Motion's been approved uh, to do item number one and number two on the consent agenda. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Gaspar makes motion to uh, approve consent agenda. Johnson second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. If, you, if your item was approved on the consent agenda, you are free to leave. So we'll move on to the regular agenda. Scott? Good evening, Scott Anderson, County Planning. Uh, item uh, number three is a rezoning request, 1805, to rezone approximately 30 and a half, 30.5 acres from A1 Agriculture District to the Laurel Ridge Plan Development District. You may recall this was an item that we discussed at length at our last meeting, which was November 26th, and at that time, uh, it was a continued until tonight's meeting in order for the applicant to hold a neighborhood meeting and to 
you directed him also to obtain some traffic study information. Uh, he did, he held a neighborhood meeting, I believe, on December 6th, and I'll let the applicant uh, relay what was, what happened at that meeting and what, what occurred. He also provided um, quite a bit of traffic information from HDR, which was included in your packet for, for your review. And once again, for those in the, sort of a refresher for the people in the audience, I'll go through generally what the applicant is requesting and then followed up by what our staff's recommendation is. So this is the general area. Um, it's about uh, half, three-fourths of a mile um, off of uh, Jim's Weep Highway, uh, off of Slip Up Creek Road. And the applicant is basically requesting a plan development consisting of three sub-areas. Sub-area A is the commercial sub-area which consists of a, uh, an event facility, wedding barn, uh, hosting facility. Uh, the second area, sub-area B, which is shown in the red, is the largest portion of the proposed plan development and that is to remain ag. And then followed up by sub-area C, which is a residential component, which was the applicant would like to develop that into seven residential lots. So those are the three sub areas that the applicant is requesting and staff is recommending approval of sub area A and B and not recommending approval of any residential development component of the plan development which would be sub area C. Uh, in your packet you will find two proposed ordinances that for your review uh, the first ordinance has regulations and guidelines for sub area A, B, and C. The second proposed ordinance only has sub areas A and B, which would be the wedding barn, hosting facility, uh, or event center, whatever we'd like to call the hosting facility, and an, and an agricultural component. So I'll, I'll go through the slides again just to give you, uh, refresh your memory of generally what the property looks like. You can see it's a, it's a generally a, 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 a river valley, a small creek flows through it, Slip Up Creek, which goes into the Big Sioux River um, and uh, taken in a much nicer climate and times in, in, in November. But this shows you generally the property. I'm standing at the entrance of the, the newly created driveway that would go down to the, to the events hosting facility. I'm looking to the east, northeast, where Slip Up Creek Road turns and starts going north. This is looking at the driveway, also looking straight back west towards the county highway, Jim Sweep Highway. This is at the, you can see the newly created driveway approach, looking straight south at where that wedding events facility would occur or would, would be built. Where the road curves, uh, you can see South of that is where the proposed events facility would be constructed. This is generally the site. Um, this is, you know, looking, this is down where the wedding facility would, would be constructed or the hosting barn looking straight north towards the Slip Up Creek Road. Just just shows some of the agricultural area. There were horses grazing in the area. And you can see the field there. This is looking straight e east where the proposed residential development would occur on the other side of the creek on that bluff on that hill. So I will be glad to answer any questions that you have and I'll, I will leave it on this map showing the proposed sub areas. Uh, can I answer any questions? Thanks Scott. Is the petitioner here? Will you please come forward, state your name and address, please? <coughs> I'm Tyler Childress, address 47677 Slip Up Creek Road. Um, last meeting, your staff recommended approval of rezoning 18 05 to Slip Up Area A, the commercial wedding use. Uh, my homework that I went and did, um, uh, step one was to hold a neighborhood meeting. Uh, that was held in the Mapleton Township and we had quite a good turnout and it was more informational um, and we discussed future use of land, uh, Sioux Falls future growth, 
Sioux Falls, Minnehaha County Joint Area Safety, Hours Operation, uh, Business Event Information, Spot Zoning, and Other Concerns. Uh, the meeting went very well and was an open forum and had many questions answered. An opportunity to have a second meeting was voted down by the neighborhood. Uh, the second requirement was a traffic study. Um, Jason at HDR completed a traffic study discussion memo that you guys should have there as well. In this memo, I explained what you've all been supplied with. Um, a traffic counter was also supplied and put on Slip Up Creek Road, and we have that information for you there as well. Um, the tip typical threshold to meet warrants for a turn lane on CR 125 was a concern last time, and Jason, which is the vice president of HDR, said that's not likely due to the low volume of traffic my use would have. Uh, traffic counts have been performed and are continuously performed on the county roads. Uh, the township issued a driveway permit. The county staff recommending approval. The mayor has shown favor with these types of uses. Um, I have met all requirements and hope we can see that the long hours and all preparation that we've had in, into this. Uh, Sioux Falls weddings deserve this. The veterans deserve this. I would urge the panel to vote approval <coughs> for, for the beautiful and harmonious application. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer those now. Jeff? Tyler, uh, how do you feel about the um, uh, sub area C being uh, declined as far as residential? Yeah, it was more my long term goal of what the property is going to be like. And when I say long term, you know, I have to fit within the requirements that the city is going to grow out there. They're saying 2030 to 2040 for that. So it bums me out right now. But, you know, going forward long term, it could be optional. Um, they, we'd have to figure out a better access to the east side of the creek there. Um, but I, I understand why that is there. Any other questions for petitioner? I got one. Um, at the last meeting, there was some concern from people that were here about the cemetery that might be coming in or will be coming in. Was that brought up at your uh, neighborhood meeting, and what was your thought about that? Yeah, it was. Um, unfortunately, I took, I felt I took much of the brunt. Um, a lot of people didn't understand what was happening, what change was coming to the neighborhood. Uh, due to the cemetery being ag, there was not a uh, application for rezoning. So many people didn't quite understand what that meant and how that would affect them. So there are a lot of frustrations and um, feelings felt by that. Um, and I had to overcome those objections and we worked through those. Um, you know, whether my project comes or goes, that one's coming and the, the use is going to change. Um, you know, mine fits well with that use. And um, yeah, we went over in detail, kind of, we got a scope letter and we didn't provide that. Um, just the local residents received kind of a um, scope letter from the Veterans Association. And I'm not sure if anyone in the city or county has seen that yet and I can provide that, but it just explains kind of the time, uh, the uh, layout and how it's gonna be and where the entrances are and just kind of a initial design and drawing. Um, I would have you guys all reach out to the veterans Council and get more informed too because it seems like no one really knows anything about that at all and I'm having to do all the legwork behind the scenes to make sure I meet all the needs of the well, That's kind of what I was getting at because you had to do the total road study and yeah. they you're basically doing it for them Yep, um, there were Jason and I from ACR had a long conversation about that and um, both our uses don't don't have enough use to constitute a, a, a traffic study. It's off, it's non-peak hours, and it's off hours. So it, it's, the use is not typically what he sees in a traffic study. So both my project and their project, in his eyes, again, vice president of the company, don't see it as an, a needed step of the process because the use is gonna be off-peak Saturdays, Sundays, you know, nights, that kind of stuff. So that's how they see that. They say peak between 7.30 and 9 and peak between 4.30 and 6, and that's not going to be when my traffic or their traffic is going to be. Any other questions? Um, you may be called back. Yep, no problem. Thank you. Are there any other preponents out there?
State your name and address, please. Kyle Kosan, Kosan Construction, 4412 North Hillcrest, Sioux Falls, 57104. Um, I just wanted to stand up and show support. Well, we're looking at creating a beautiful event venue um, that'll service the community, both local area and Sioux Falls. Uh, we want to create an atmosphere that'll, that brides and grooms can be proud of. We believe it's a perfect location, um, very close proximity to Sioux Falls and in the near growth of the city. Uh, we are going to be utilizing a lot of locally sourced subs and suppliers and it, though we may not have a huge economic impact, we will have some and it'll be, it'll be from everyone from subs, DJs, suppliers, um, catering, anything like that. Uh, one other thing we want to mention is we'll talk to our suppliers and subs uh, about roadway safety during the construction process and uh, make sure we keep it safe for the residents in the area if we've got construction traffic moving and those items. Um, I feel time is of the essence and I feel like we've gone through all the necessar necessary steps to uh, move forward with the project and complied with all the requirements of the Joint Council um, and I guess I would strongly encourage you guys to vote in favor of it. Thank you. Any other questions? <laughs> any other proponents? Is there any opponents out there in the crowd? Please state your name and address, please. Uh, can everybody stand up that's from the neighborhood area out there at Slip Up Creek? Everybody that's from the area, neighborhood? Just to give you an idea of our, what our concerns are and why everybody's here. I'm Mark Dawson. I'm from 47649 Sorrell Street. I'm less than a quarter of a mile from uh, my house is less than a quarter of a mile due north, northwest from <coughs> this uh, area that the event center is proposed to go in. <coughs> we have some concerns. The safety of the traffic. If you noticed on the slide that he presented before, uh, gentleman to my right, there's a sharp curve to the east of the driveway that goes up to the motocross Saddleback. There is significant traffic on that dirt road coming from Saddleback most of the year actually. The ice races out there and different stuff um, quite a bit. So that with the event center traffic is a concern for me and, and some others. The other thing that's a concern is uh, safety wise is Slip Up Creek Road itself. The residents in Andy's Acres paid for that road to be paved, the township. That road has no shoulders. The paved part has no shoulders. It doesn't have any even uh, dirt shoulders on it. It has a steep ditches on each side of it. We're concerned about the construction traffic going in there. We're concerned about <coughs> the, um, the electrical and the other uh, facilities going in there for water, et cetera, and all the traffic, construction traffic on that road that's about whether it's going to be able to handle that or not. So the other thing is, is because um, there's also a hill to the west, as he showed us on the slide, you can see up the hill. What you didn't see at the crest of that hill is the first residential house on the north side of the road, and they continue all the way to the county road. There are a lot of, there's a few of us residents out there that came to the meetings. So you can imagine how many more live in that area, Andy's Acres. <coughs> We're across, right next to my property is the southern boundary of the state cemetery, the veteran cemetery. And there's a field that separates that to the Slip Up Creek Road and right across the road is the event center. A lot of us, I speak for myself and some others, there's some others that may come up and say differently, but I do not believe that is congruent and acceptable to have an event center there across from the Veterans Cemetery. If this, if this goes in, our other concern is if it's, it gets to be commercial, it's, there's uh, egg land out there and residential property only. We're concerned that this will co continue with more commercial property and what if this event center should, for whatever reason, I, I, I do appreciate the entrepreneurship 
from the gentleman, but you know, if it goes, it goes, it changes hands and somebody else wants to come in and do something else commercial with the property, this is a concern for us as well. The noise, seven, seven days a week out there, uh, combined with with the motocross, but that mm -hmm. event center is very close, is right across the street from the east, south, east end of Andy's Acres residential area. Um, I just uh, just want to run down a few items. I don't want to take very long on it. There are other people here that want to speak. But I just want to let you know that we have our doubts and we have our concerns with all this going on out there with what it'll do to the neighborhood, not the ambiance so much, but safety as well and the <coughs> what, it'll, what it'll do to the traffic and the road itself out there. Okay, this is not a county road. It's a Mapleton Township road. Thank you. Mr. Dawson, can I uh, <coughs> Is your house visible on this uh, um, map, the photo? Are you uh, where you live? Yeah, it's, it's I'm trying to get myself oriented here. Sorrell Street, yeah. But, okay, this, this is Slip Up Creek, is that right? No, uh, this, you're right. this is Slip Up Creek. That's Andy's. My house is right there. Okay. Almost got to do it. Right there. Thank you. And there's another lot right bef between me, a house, another lot, not a house, between me and Slip Up Creek Road. Thank you. Let's stand by if anybody has any other questions. Any other questions? Thank okay. you. Thank you. Is there any, any other opposition that would like to speak? State your name and address, please. Thank you. My name is Stephen Bechtold. I live at uh, 476 14 Slip Up Creek Road. <clears throat> I've got one question and then just a couple of points. The question is, do any of, uh, this is gonna be a planned urban development or a PUD or, and, and from the meeting last time, the comment was made that because of that, some restrictions could be put on it or conditions. Is that correct? Conditions can be put on it. Yes. Okay, beyond so just the zoning. Okay. My question is, <coughs> do any restrictions or uh, conditions that we put, you put on this operation, do they run with the property? Or uh, if the owner or the operator changes, do the conditions continue on the property for any subsequent use? In other words, if the uh, wedding facility or barn changes operation, do the conditions that might be put on it continue on the property? Yes, they do. Okay, thank you. Uh, then observations, I guess what I'd like to have considered for conditions, uh, and we talked somewhat of, of this matter at uh, the last meeting, uh, the hours of operation. Uh, is it going to be restricted to end at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 midnight, or what? But I think there should be some stipulation as to the hours allowed to operate the facility. Now, how long will these parties or events continue? Uh, the second thing, and we talked about it last time too, is a restriction on outside activities. In other words, are they going to have live music, bands, uh, uh, speakers outside? Uh, I would like that restricted or eliminated. Uh, there's a concern about litter control up and down Slip Up Creek in front of our residences. There are approximately 40 houses within a mile of this operation. Uh, I think the operator should be responsible for control of litter, picking it up. I know our township man picks up things from mattresses to who knows what out there, but if he's going to have things going on multiple times a week, uh, I think the litter problem would be increased and I think it should be his responsibility. Uh, we've talked about traffic. I would like to have traffic, no parking on Slip Up Creek. They should all be down by the barn. Uh, no parking on Slip Up Creek. There is no 
there is no shoulder that's been mentioned and uh, I think it'd be a real traffic hazard if people parked up on the road uh, I'd like to limit on outside lighting when I moved out there 46 years ago there were not even any lights on the interchange between 229 and 90 there are lights there now and the darn things cast a shadow when I'm out in my yard and I'm a mile away from it. Other intersections with newer lighting have shades where they just shade the light down. I don't think there should be any light pollution off the property. In other words, light shining out. I've got a property in uh, rural South Dakota and there's a car dealership four miles away and those lights shine clear over my property four miles away. Uh, I'm also not very fond of the Sanford blue lights, but there's probably damn little I could do about that. <laughs> uh, and some are not aware. Uh, I would guess there will be times when there will be an event at the barn when there is a cemetery, a procession, a funeral procession coming down Slip Up Creek. I, don't, I know that all people are not aware of protocol on when a cemetery procession goes by. <coughs> But I think the operator should be required to have somebody at the gate. So when, not all times, but when there is a uh, funeral procession coming down to prevent cars from leaving his property, cutting through the procession, cutting in front of it, or basically uh, interrupting the ceremony. Those are my comments. Any questions that you have of me? Thank you. You bet. State your name and address, please. Uh, Ryan Bechtold, 47610 Slip Up Creek, uh, right next to my dad. Um, just a couple quick things. The area that your future home is going to be built on, when will that be built? Plan. Pla plan. He can address that later. Okay. He just um, raise the questions. Yes, ma'am. The other thing is the respect of the board. I was here last meeting and just a couple of comments. Mr. Barth made a comment that we don't live in a museum. You're going to insult us. It's not a museum we'd want to live in. It's a preserve. We want to keep the things the way they are, agriculture and residential. That's why we moved out there. The other comment from Kurt Johnson for calling the police or sheriff whenever someone's speeding or may doing something naughty. They appreciate the uptick in phone calls. They know they don't have the manpower to protect, protect us all the time. So those are my two complaints for the board. Um, the other thing is, as a veteran, I missed your the meeting that you held. I appreciate the meeting. I wasn't there. I had drill that weekend. As a veteran, and I'll hopefully be buried out there someday, um, along with my wife, I don't see how the two fit. I understand it's going to happen, and I know it's probably going to happen because hopefully I'll get a job bartending or working with my um, rescue group. We'll probably rent your facility in the future. But uh, that was the biggest thing. The comments you people made at the end of it, you don't seem to take into account the way the neighbors feel. 41 houses up there, 40 houses up there, doesn't seem like you take into account the way we live, the way we are. You're not allowed to go out there and check the property out beforehand, I understand. I don't understand that. And the other thing I don't understand is how the city can dictate what people can do out there, but I can't vote for the city on anything the city does since I don't live inside city limits but they can tell me what tell us what we can and can't do in our own neighborhoods. So those are my main issues. Anybody else care to speak? <coughs> Brad Phil 25985 475th Avenue. I'm uh, right next to the adjoining property that you're they want rezoned um, as far as anybody that I've talked to a lot of people that live in most of the people that live in the area none of them are for this project um, it seems to be getting lumped together with the uh, veterans cemetery and we're not here to tread on the veterans cemetery I want that to be known but at the same time, um, you have to admit that that cemetery is going to create a ton of traffic for our area. Um, you're looking at two, three funerals a day on some days. Um, if they're an average of 100 uh, cars per uh, funeral, you're looking at 300 vehicles going down a two-lane street with no shoulders, hills, 
dead ends, curves, and most of it's gravel. So um, adding in this, um, the motorcycle track, the veterans cemetery, and a uh, giant bar, you know, we could be looking at 800 to 1,000 vehicles a day. And that's outrageous for that type of uh, road. And I'd have to say a professional um, safety study would have to be done because right now what you're looking at is just us rural people living there and what goes on at the motorcycle track. And we all say there's too much traffic already just from that. So um, lump it all together is kind of the feeling I'm getting here. And when you do that, it's overwhelming for traffic. And nobody's gotten an answer to working with the roads or add new roads in. The state's turned it down. The city turns it down. The county turns it down. The township doesn't want anything to do with it and can't afford it. So who's got answers to all this traffic? And now that traffic's gonna create problems with emergency vehicles. It's a, a volunteer fire department. Um, and it's the sheriff's department that already can't even keep up with the dumping out there, as well as the trespassing that goes on in the area and uh, several other things. So who's gonna police this uh, situation when you got 400 people out there getting drunk on a Saturday night. Anybody got an answer for that kind of stuff? Those are just part of the concerns that we're um, looking at. Um, most of it, it comes right back to child safety. I'm a school bus driver for Brandon School District and we have that area and uh, there's definite um, stress when they have to pick up children and drop them off in that area. The Jim Zweep Road alone is crazy busy. Um, the 35 mile an hour speed limit zone there <coughs> is totally ignored most times and the Sheriff's Department is unable to do anything about it. Um, so we're not getting answers back to what we know is gonna be major issues and I wish somebody had answers. Um, and again, just to reiterate, m most of these people paid for that, the, what little blacktop is out there, and uh, they're gonna get nothing but damaged roads out of the deal. Um, and I don't think you answered the sewage problem um, fully either. Uh, when you have that many people at one facility, um, how are they going to uh, control the sewage? Right now, there's no uh, public sewage system out there, and uh, I don't think you can buy tanks big enough to hold all the sewage water that will come from that. So a lot of, uh, lot of issues um, that um, have not been answered and um, I'd have to reject anything um, where they don't actually come out and study the traffic, especially in the uh, dead of winter when it's the slowest. And, uh, you know, those things aren't set up and operating at this time. You know, we don't have 200 vehicles from a funeral going through right now. So what's the traffic safety study supposed to tell you? It tells me that it, common sense says that a two-lane road, most of it's gravel and curved and um, hilly and dead end, and there's one way in and one way out that somebody needs to come up with some answers for roads because that road cannot handle it. There's no way. And the state turned us down already. We've talked to them. This is a state cemetery. We don't have any plans for putting roads in. Is the city going to put roads in? Is the county going to put roads in? Because I'll guarantee you one two-lane road isn't going to um, suffice. There's no way. Any questions? Mr. Madam Chair, I have a question. Mr. Thill, uh, I wasn't here at, my name is Steve Gaspar. I wasn't here at the first meeting. Uh, my question is, is 
did the Veterans Administration tell you that they're going to have three a day, three funerals a day, every day? Where are you getting that information? From what goes on out in the Black Hills, partly. How many funerals yeah, they have? Twenty six hundred a year. Okay, that's and that's what that's a question I'm asking because I I wasn't here. Sir, you're out of order. So I'm asking Mr. Thill this. So, yeah. So yeah, it's that kind of information. Okay. We've been so that's where it came from. Again, yeah. I just I just need to know because I wasn't well, they, part of that. Well, and they first sent meeting. that survey out too to some of us, and they sent um, filled it out and sent it back. And some of the concerns or other concerns were, what about all the traffic? What are you going to do for that? Um, are you planning any more roads? Uh, are you planning on widening, widening Slip Up Creek Road? <coughs> and they said they have no plans whatsoever of putting any roads there. Okay. So if you got motorcycle track, cemetery, and now you want to put a huge bar out there too on roads that cannot handle it. But, but it was it was the Veterans Administration that has actually said that there's probably going to be about 2,600 yeah. a year. Okay. That's, they that, average uh, that was a, a question I was every asking. 20 minutes um, on Saturdays out in the Black Hills. Okay. Every 20 minutes. That's a lot of traffic flow. And you tell me, how, how's that two-lane road supposed to handle all that traffic? That's not part of my question. The question I just <laughs> needed to know that part. That's my question. Yep. I'm asking. <laughs> uh, nobody's giving us answers. Um, I'm not against the vets. I'm all for the vets. But we really didn't know the zoning um, commission was acting on that cemetery either at the time. So <laughs> we didn't get in here to voice it. And, and we're not opposed to a cemetery being there. But we are opposed to getting trampled by traffic. There's no two ways about it. You're going to have a lot of traffic. And now you add a um, bar to this scenario too, and you take a Saturday night where they're having races up the road too. There's one way in, one way out on that road. There's no two ways about it. 477th doesn't go through. It comes up to Slip Up Creek. Slip Up Creek comes up to 477th Avenue. And that's it. No way, other way in or out. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Any other opposition out there? I'll, I'll take a couple more and then I'll have, we'll have the petitioner come up and then I'm going to close the floor. Hi, I'm John Beck and my wife Tina Beck. We live at 47645 Sorrell Street. We live approximately a fourth of a mile away from the site. We're two houses down from Dawson that was up here. At the last meeting here, uh, the question was brought up about noise control, and I believe it was said that local county ordinances would be followed for noise control. Um, we did a little checking, and we couldn't find out anything about any noise restrictions in the county. We were curious if somebody could help us with an answer to that. And if there isn't one, I'd like to suggest that some sort of restrictions be placed on the proposed development for noise control. The other question is about um, traffic and the safety of all the people that live out in the area right now and the safety of the proposed development for the event center and the cemetery. I think one good suggestion would be let's wait and see how traffic really turns out with the veterans cemetery first before allowing this facility to be built and then we'll know right away how this road's going to be impacted. We've heard both sides that it's it can take the traffic because the veterans are going to build their cemetery and we have heard from all, a lot of people concerned that there's no way it's going to be able to handle all the traffic. And I agree with what was said before. There was a, a traffic study done recently. I haven't seen that report, but I agree that if it was done within the last month, it's not going to really show what really happens out there when that road gets busy with motorcycles and these other proposed facilities. Because there is a 35 mile an hour speed zone that is not followed by the majority of people that drive out there that don't live out there. There's a 35 mile an hour on 
the gym's weep, that I have been past going 35 in a no passing zone. Same things happen there. Nobody's following the speed zone. And as other people have said, the, uh, the sheriff's overwhelmed already. They don't have enough pat people patrolling the area to try to maintain speeds, a safe speed. And I can't see any way with limited resources that they'll be able to control traffic coming in and out of this area with future expansion. Especially when you've had people drinking. That's any other all comments? Have. Excuse me? You have any other comments? Nope, that's it. Thank you. Any other opposition? I will make it perfectly clear. If you have something new to say, you can say it. Otherwise, there's no reason in reiterating what we've already heard. My name is Russ, please. My name is Russ Christensen. I'm and Robin. my wife, Robin, we live at 47628. Slip Up Creek, which is right on the highway. And this is a bit of a reiteration, but I want to reiterate it. And the fact is that the racetrack right now, the kids that come out there, their adrenaline is running. They're running late. But not only that, but their adrenaline is going, and you should see them when the race is over. It's still going, and they think they're at the Indy 500, I sit right on the highway. We have 10 grandchildren, under 11 and under, and they all live in this area, and our house, our yard, is the central meeting location for those kids and those families. And it will ruin the traffic. The additional traffic is just gonna take away from our serenity from our children's safety, and that's why we came here. That's all I really wanted to state. We've also lost pets, too, on that road already just from the racetrack traffic. So it's just going to be noise pollution just from the traffic alone. And I grew up in this area and then came back to, um, we had bought a house after someone had had put it up for sale and we didn't expect that to happen and that was only three years ago but we didn't expect this event center and the cemetery to go in. So it kind of ruins the property value of ours too. Um, we're not opposed to the cemetery but like everybody else was saying that um, you've got the combination of all three and it's just gonna be too much and we're not gonna feel safe having our grandkids outside or our dogs outside. So. That's what we wanted to say. That's about all we've got. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone else? Opposition? I'm Scott Zwalk, 47646 Slip Up Creek Road. Um, actually, I'm the one that gets to see all these people come flying down the gravel road on the last, last house on that road. Um, that's two, two big concerns, which everybody said, is the road and noise. I mean, they're down there in the bottom, and if you stand up in my place, you can see right down to where that building's going to be, and any noise is going to come right up over the top of us. And just, just to go to show how bad the noise travels, Samford um, Lab over there, yearly they have a big party you can sit in my front room and hear the music mm -hmm. and that's going over the top of the interstate and everything else so i think if this is even considered there's got to be some sort of dust bowl at 100 foot or 50 foot or something because we're all going to be complaining about it and uh, as far as the traffic goes now I sent the letter to, or the, actually the, the uh, state sent me a letter about the cemetery asking any concerns. And my concern was the road and traffic. And as everybody said, you know, they don't have no plans of doing anything on the road, but one thing they are going to do is any construction traffic has to come in from the north. And basically 
in the letter they said that road they do not feel is going to hold up to the traffic so are we going to make sure that road um, falls apart and <laughs> let something else go in there without knowing about it and you know the other thing is is what money does the township have to fix that road I happened to get my taxes the other day and I was reading through it there is such of a small amount of my taxes that go to fix that road it's unbelievable and that's all something that's got to be looked at I mean we're we're, we're gonna be we're gonna be back to a gravel road is what's gonna happen here so that's all I have thank you Anyone? You have to come back up to the podium. Robin Christensen, do you want my address again? Do you need my address? You again? should say it, please. 47628 Slip Up Creek Road, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57104. If this does go through, I would, I would suggest that they put some kind of um, speed bumps or something in front of that area where we live or have it more enforced on speed limits there. Because even this morning, drinking coffee out our front window, a car went by that street probably 60 miles an hour. And to my understanding, it's supposed to be 35. So there needs to be something to control the speed on that road mainly. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else? Come on, Todd. Don Oschlager, uh, Mapleton Township. I'd like to just once again address the road issue. Um, on January 8th, I was contacted by Stephen Palmer, state engineer, working uh, with the Veterans Cemetery. Um, everybody says that um, they're telling them that nothing is going to be done to that road. Um, I beg to... Uh, to argue that eventually something will be done to that road. I think we all know that a gravel road going into the Veterans Cemetery is unacceptable. And um, he asked about weight limits on the two bridges coming in off of 258. So when they say that there's only one way in and one way out, I believe a lot of saddleback traffic is out on 258 as well as coming around some of the Sioux Falls traffic. I believe they're correct that comes in on slip up. Um, there will be some, some road improvements eventually. I know there's um, some, some legislators that are working on it. We don't know. I mean, it's the unknowns that everyone is fearful of. As far as Mapleton Township, um, we're asking that Tyler would do um, some, some dust control, some magnesium chloride on the gravel portion of it. Um, he's agreed to that. We gave him a driveway permit, believing that his event center was a good fit to the neighborhood. I'm one of three township board supervisors. Um, two of us visited the site for the driveway permit and uh, two of us were at the open meeting. Um, I need to remain neutral as a township board supervisor. We do roads and fire and I think the road, uh, the residents that are here are correct that they invested in blacktop on the road. <clears throat> I also believe that uh, I as a Township Board Supervisor would have that proposed to me, I would deny that. Um, I don't think it's ever a good idea for the public to invest in a, for, for the public to invest in a public right away like they did. And they did it because the road was very hard to maintain. Um, it went on for a long time. I was not on the board at the time. And they invested their money in a public right of way. Um, what happens when the public right of way falls apart, um, we allocate $6,000 a year to a mile and a half of blacktop. The reason we do that is because our average cost of roads and road maintenance is approximately $4,000 a mile, which includes motor grader, operator insurance, gravel product. That's what it takes to operate. So we allocate 6000 towards blacktop every year. So far we've been able to crack seal and chip seal it. Um, you know, I, I don't know that 
the automobile traffic, it's posted at six ton, and we did that to keep the heavy trucks off of it, obviously. And um, the car traffic, the cemetery traffic, I, you know, I'm not an engineer. I don't, I don't know that that's going to have that much effect on, on that road. Obviously, any traffic affects the road. I, I get that. Um, as a township, we weren't, we weren't opposed. We would have never given the driveway permit if we thought that this was going to be a big issue. I think the bigger issue for us was the cemetery. But we've kind of got uh, some assurances that we, we know that eventually there's going to be some, some road improvement there. And uh, there needs to be. Um, there's another half mile of our road on uh, 72nd, East 72nd. Um, that road traffic is 100 times what slip up is. And it's, it's difficult to keep that gravel in shape but that road eventually will get taken over either by the city through um, through development there or perhaps the county. So um, funding is an issue, whether it be the, the township, the county, or the state. Um, but I, I know that what you see there now is not going to be what you see there in, in time to come. I don't know how soon it's going to happen, but um, I know that there is uh, people in here working on it. I wish it were done now prior to this, but unfortunately it's not. Any questions? How many miles of asphalt do you have in your township then that you have to maintain? Um, mile and a half. That's it? We have another development that is... Um, that they, they have their own funding sources. We have a street that has their own funding sources for funding for assessments. We have a road district. So, yeah, a mile and a half for, for us. Okay. Um, I would have liked to have seen it go to a road district. If it were to happen again, I believe that that's probably the way it would go. Well, <clears throat> so, yeah. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Sure, Scott, go ahead. I want to make sure everyone has their time to speak, so I'll do it after everyone's okay. done. Any other opposition? Okay. Petitioner, you want to come forward again? I think you had something to say as well. Part of my <coughs> duty as a developer is to make sure everyone's heard, make sure everyone's understood, and to just hear everyone out. So I just want to kind of go over a couple of the um, hot points of them. Um, Rick at Saddleback, um, he is the, I'm not sure his exact title, but he was the one that purchased land, runs the operation there. Um, he said that 80% of the traffic comes from the north. That's him spitballing it. That's him just giving me his random estimates. So that's what he's understanding. Um, you know, these, these barns are starting to become more popular and they're starting to show up more and more. Um, there was just one approved, Emerald Pines. Um, that's on the opposite side of town. There's been one that's approved, Blue Haven. They're adding a second location to that same commercial site. Um, so these businesses are, are working. Uh, my goal was to cater towards weddings and the, the cemetery happened. As far as safety, um, I've got three kids one on the way my wife is actually here we're three days past due so any day we could have to go for our fourth we plan to build a house there so we would not put any residents or anything there that would jeopardize safety we we homeschool our kids um, we will be there all the time this is part of a lifestyle that we are trying to choose um, a couple things as far as on the the raceway and i did some research on there they actually do not have a conditional use permit. Um, what that allows them to do is to have a 24-hour event if they so choose. They can have noise whenever they want, inside, outside. Um, mine would be more restricted and would have a conditional use permit. So we'd be much more understanding to that as well. Um, there were on Jim Zweep, uh, HDR and the traffic study estimated a 0.08 difference 
due to adding us. That's what the difference of us, of the business that we put out there, would add to that location, 0 0.08. Um, as far as sewage, um, we would have that state engineered, everything would be taken care of there. There would be no issues. It would have to be permitted and signed off by the state. Um, I've been talking to, it feels like, everybody in the Veterans Cemetery. And the numbers that I've received is 240 to 260 per year, not 2,600. So just, there's a discrepancy in the numbers there. Um, <coughs> the Veterans Cemetery has no food, has no, no drinks allowed on there at all. You can't get a barbecue. You can't have a meeting after. Um, it's designed to quick in, take care of your respects, and then back out. Um, there's no place anywhere close that allows families, uh, people who travel from long ways away, to have events in there. Just want to kind of understand what our synergy is to that. Um, Steve mentioned um, multiple of conditions, and I, I think they're all within reason. Um, when, when you're out there on the property I have and you look all around, you can see lights of one house. There's a brand new house right on Sipup Creek, kind of in, um, I believe it's the second or third, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure. There's a brand new house that was built that you can see one, one light out there. I've been told that the cemetery will have lights then could be 24-hour access. Lights could be on all night, could be shining bright. Our goal is to shine them down, have it on our property only, not to, the goal of these event centers is to bring an experience, um, to bring everything on site. We plan on having um, shuttles and chauffeurs, and that type of thing that can bring people from this event center into town as well. And again, we just urge that you um, understand what what the mayor has proposed for other event centers, um, what your staff has proposed, uh, that these are a needed and a, a, a good use for the land. Thank you. Any questions at all? Any questions for him? I have a question, Madam Chair. Um, could you speak more about the restrictions that you discussed at your meeting with the neighbors? And you just referenced that um, you were looking at this as a conditional use situation. It's proposed as a planned unit development. And I apologize. Yeah, my, my wording was not quite right there. What, what agreement was there, if any, at the neighborhood meeting regarding restrictions? There was no set in stone anything that was discussed. It was one neighbor talking to another neighbor, trying to be good neighbors. Did you present some? Did not, you know, and, and I want to conform to, let's just, if, if we pick out emerald pines, for example, a similar use, we would go with what they have and we'd be open to options. But that would all be discussed, if I'm right, Scott, in the next meeting, if approved, correct? Some of it. Some of it I wanted to discuss with them. Okay. I don't know if that Questions answers your question or not. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you thought Steve had some good ideas, and so as I look at his ideas, uh, hours of operation, uh, what would you think would be reasonable? Yeah, I think 11.30 to midnight in that range would be a good idea. Most weddings, most um, people who get married, that would be the time of operation. It would be like an 8 a.m. to then. And do you think you'll have sufficient parking on site so people won't park on the road? Yeah, we've actually, and it's not pictured, but the road that comes in, the driveway approach, we've intentionally made one side for excess parking that allows diagonally down the hill. So if we do have a large event and such, we could accommodate an extra 100 cars, maybe even a little bit more than that. Do you have any idea about the number of cars that you could handle? Yeah, what we, we had Jason at HDR, and that should be on that report too, um, sh explains what this use would be, um, let me find the exact wording here, trip generation is what they use on level three there, the venue of 300 to 400 chairs would see uh, 150 to 200 trips, so 150 to 200 trips is kind of what he's estimating on there. We, we see most of our traffic coming from Sioux Falls, I mean, right off Interstate 229 coming north there. Um, the cemetery, 
is going to push a lot probably towards Cliff Avenue and move that way. So I don't know if ours would be exactly that, but. Any other questions? Thank you. Yep, thank you. Scott, do you want to come to the podium and? Uh, once again, Scott Anderson, Planning Director. So there, uh, Commissioner Barth made a, a valid point. This we we really have we can address this now, or we can address it during the final development plan. So I just wanted to go over, uh, sort of reiterate a little bit of what could be done right now, if you so desire. So if you if you go to the sub area requirements, under sub area A, which is the commercial or the events facility. Under item three, it says parking regulations. You may want to add a sentence that says no parking on Slip Up Creek Road. That would take care of uh, one of the concerns that was brought up. And then under item six, where it says other regulations, which would apply to that area, may want to add something like a, a condition D, which would be hours of operation shall be between 8 a.m. and 11.30 p.m. Uh, item E, all lighting has to be the shoebox style type that we require and pointed downward so no light spills off the property which the applicant indicated would be acceptable and then item F you may want to add something that says like no outdoor music shall be allowed after 9 p.m. that may satisfy or you know uh, address some of the concerns from the neighborhood that you heard so I'm just saying that those are options that are open to you and uh, I'd be glad to answer any other questions. I know my, my concern here is that we've sort of commingled the cemetery and this use, and really we should be, this is a hearing on this events facility, not a hearing on the, the uh, cemetery, because that's a permitted use in the Ag District. There was never a hearing that was misrepresented to, to the audience that they didn't get to attend a hearing I didn't either because there was never a hearing on the uh, on that cemetery. It's a permitted use, so I just wanted to make sure that was clear. And the applicant did correctly identify that the number of uh, proposed funerals are approximately 250 a year. They do not have funerals on Saturday and Sunday, which will benefit the applicant because that's probably his prime time is going to be. Saturdays is going to be one of his major days. They don't hold funerals, and that was told to me by the state people that are involved with this. I have sat on meetings with that. There are no funerals on Saturday or Sunday. Scott, you stay there a minute. Yeah. There's some people that have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, so, is there a security management plan put in place for the alcohol? Well, they have to obtain a. a, a some kind of a liquor license from the county uh, and they are vetted through our auditor's office to make sure that they are you know uh, able to hold a, a, a liquor license but as part of that and that's not really my area of expertise that's out of the auditor's office I don't believe that they have to provide any kind of a security plan when you apply for a, a liquor license and Jeff, uh, Commissioner Barth may be able to better uh, relay. I don't know if there's any liquor licenses that are left in the county available. There are none. We there are none. We're sold out, and if there was one, it'd be $250,000. So they would only be able to get uh, malt, wine, and beer license, I believe, is all that would be available. Sometimes there is hard alcohol served at these venues. And it's because the caterers, like hy V has one, and they, they are able to come out and they have a liquor license. And they can get a special, uh, like a three-day uh, temporary event license. So that's not to say that you might not have hard alcohol sold, uh, distributed out there or used. So, Scott, I have a question. Sure. Uh, so if, let's say that there was a restriction that uh, it should, things should end at 11 o'clock, okay? If things were going well, and can that be appealed by the operator? I mean, those kinds of restrictions. Well, yes. Uh, and when, when you mean uh, let's say appealed they go at a later date, 
the, at a later date, six months down the road, things have been going well? Well, we wouldn't call that an appeal. It would be a, an amendment to the plan development. And I think that's what uh, the applicant alluded to with the residential component to this, is that maybe, you know, in 15 or 20 years, the, the, uh, the, the future growth patterns of the city will be such that it would be a more appropriate to have residential development there. The applicant can always come in, let's say, in 20 years, 15 years, and go through an amendment process to add the residential component. When you go through an amendment process for those in the audience, so this is for everyone's education and benefit, when you go through an amendment process, it's like starting all over again. There's hearing notices that are sent out to the neighbors, the adjacent property owners. There's notices published in the paper, and then there's a notice posted on the property. So you, you, we attempt to go through that process again to make sure everyone's aware, to the best of our ability, that there is an amendment request to, that's somehow going to change the components of the plan development. Any other questions? Madam Chair, I have a question. Scott, could you talk about the traffic study specific to this application? I, well, specific to the application, I will just indicate that HDR prepared the study. They're <coughs> qualified uh, engineering company to do traffic studies. They prepared a study, they did some traffic counts, and that information is in your packet. Uh, I, I'm not going to say whether it was uh, addressed all the issues or didn't, uh, because, you know, I don't want to second guess their, their work, but uh, they prepared the study as you requested, and it's included in your packet. Anyone else? Thanks, Scott. Thanks. I'm going to close the floor. Any other questions? Madam Chair, if I might, uh, I actually have talked to our highway superintendent about this, and I also talked to uh, Mr. Tunison, who's with the uh, Purple Heart Association. And the federal government is going to pave the roads inside the cemetery. They won't pave anything outside. That said, uh, the, uh, the, uh, there is interest uh, at the state level in, uh, in taking care of this. Uh, Secretary Burquist has been talking to our highway superintendent. And, uh, you know, it would be a complete uh, rebuild because uh, what's there is not uh, up, to, up to the standard that they need. And uh, so I, I think that there's a good chance that the state will, will come in and, uh, and, uh, and do this. That, that said, I'm sure that the county and the township would have some uh, input in this. And I, I certainly uh, appreciate the township, uh, Mr. Oshlager, uh, commenting on it. So I think there is hope that uh, this would get upgraded whether or not the the event uh, center is, is put there because, um, uh, and I drove this on Christmas Day. My wife and I d decided to see what might be open, and nothing was open on that road, but uh, we drove it anyway. Um, and I know the idea about going down that hill, going to the north there, where it's uh, uh, steep and, and icy possibly. But I think there is a, a chance that this will get uh, a paved road at some point. Uh, in the future. I think it's kind of bold to try to put one there before it's paved. Uh, <laughs> but um, that's just some other info I have, I guess. City side have any comment? What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah, I got it. just a couple of things to say. Nothing major. I'm not holding against anybody, neighbors. You know, you guys are just lucky that nobody built the hog confinement there 10 years ago. What would you be saying then? You know, and then uh, also be a proponent for their uh, venue. 
um, if it's so many young families out there, chances are maybe your son, daughter would want to have their wedding reception there too. And would you be that naive to say, no, you can't because we were against them? I don't think so. So I'm all in favor of it. I mean, I really like it. It's a nice place down there. I visit it. I think it's a great place for a, for a wedding hall down there. Right. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm not going to say the same, exact same tune, but no, I, I think it is an appropriate use. Um, I think the petitioner has done his due diligence uh, and has, you know, obviously done what we requested him to do. So I'm in favor of it. Ryan, you have any comment? I'll leave you out. Um, I think Sioux Falls is going to go that way eventually anyway. So. Madam Chair, I have a question again for Scott, if he could uh, sure. respond to what he started on, which was a list of conditions or restrictions. Uh, so you've obviously been contemplating that question. I was making some notes while people were speaking. And how does that process continue from what might be acted on this evening and if it was to approve the preliminary application in the final design or the final um, development plan. So as I sort of uh, envisioned this uh, or I could contemplate that you would <laughs> potentially add these conditions, whatever conditions you see fit. I indicated about the parking under item three and then maybe some conditions under item six that dealt with hours of operation, lighting, and to some, if you would like to address the outdoor music, um, and it, once once you would add those conditions uh, to the area regulations, if if the uh, recommendation was for approval, well or denial, it makes no difference. What it, but if you recommended approval with adding these conditions, the added conditions would be brought forth to the joint city county meeting, which. Uh, Commissioner uh, Duffy indicated was, I think, the Feb February 26th meeting, uh, which she read aloud. Um, and then there would be a hearing at that joint city county meeting on what your proposed conditions are. So, your staff recommendation is for the commercial and the agricultural sections of the only proposed plan development unit. and an initial list, as you <coughs> indicated, of conditions which may or, or may not be added to by the time the final plan recommendation was brought forward? Well, so I would take the, these proposed area regulations that we adopt that you would um, and recommend tonight, that they would go forth and would be part of the uh, hearing at the joint city county meeting the city and the city council and the county commission at that meeting they may want to further tweak these or add conditions which they have the right to do okay thank you mm -hmm. yes I guess is there any more input from the city on this at this point well, I'd be in favor uh, myself of adding conditions now rather than trying to add them farther down the road. I think it makes it a little easier for the neighbors and the applicant all to remove conditions as things are uh, improved and as it appears that things are working out well than it is to add them at a later time. So since the petitioner seems to be receptive to some of those conditions discussed, it makes some sense to me to go ahead and add them in this case. So Sean, do you have a, a <coughs> list, list of them? I know Mr. Bechtold had talked about hours of operation, outdoor events, litter control, parking on the road, uh, I guess uh, light pollution, and um, also some respect for funeral processions. I don't know if uh, if Steve had any other ones of those, but uh, is that the ones we're thinking? Mm 
Yeah, the ones that uh, Scott kind of outlined made some sense to me if we uh, are specific about the Do motion. Do put Jeff? them in now then, Scott? Or? Can you give us some legal uh, uh, well, I think words I'll go on over them again? Okay. Yeah. So under three, under sub area A, which is, let me yeah. get to the map here. Sub area A, which is the commercial, under uh, under the area regulations number three, which it says parking regulations, I would add the sentence, no parking shall be allowed on Slip Up Creek Road. That's pretty simple. Then we would go to uh, question on that. Yeah. So the neighbors wouldn't be able to park there either. No, just that would be the area regulations for this venue. I'm, we're not regulating what the neighbors do. You're saying Slip Up Creek Road. That's pretty broad no I'm just saying that this proposed use in sub area a that they would not be allowed any that only applies to sub area a and that okay. doesn't apply to what these neighbors do okay just want to make sure that everyone understands that yeah, yeah. and then uh, so if, if this road gets reconstructed can they come back and basically take this off if it allows parking on the side potentially yeah okay. I mean you know I in, in the reality of it, I don't see uh, wedding guests walking down a road, you know, a quarter mile down to a venue. They're just not going to do it. But I, And I think that I, I, I don't see it as really an issue, but, but potentially, yes, they could come back later and amend this if, if, they, if they build, uh, uh, rebuild Slip Up Creek Road and there's curb and gutter and sidewalk. They could park there, I suppose. So sub area three, n item uh, sub area A, item three, you just add uh, no parking on Slip Up Road. That's correct. No parking shall be allowed on Slip Up Creek Road. Okay. What about uh, outdoor events? So I would go down to six, where it says other other regulations, and that's where I would start adding D, E, and F. And D would be hours of operation shall be. And I think the applicant indicated 8 a.m. to 11.30 p.m., but it's whatever hours you decide. You want to cut that right now? Oh, well. I think, I think 11.30 is late enough, I guess, for a wedding. wedding Adam, you're, you're saying 11.30? Weddings that go to are midnight. Yeah, I mean, hours operations are really restricting a business and what they can do. And typically, most weddings I've ever been to go to yeah. midnight. I mean, if they want to have an event yeah. in the morning, I mean. So it sounds like consensus is 11:30 at this point. Some point at midnight. Well, 12 o'clock. Okay, midnight. midnight. Basically. Okay. We're talking 12 here. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, and then the I would add a condition number E, which would indicate, which is our standard wording that we use. All lighting shall be the shoebox style and directed downward, so no light spills off the property. And item number F. No outdoor music shall be allowed after whatever time you feel is appropriate to buffer for the neighbors. 9 p.m., uh, I don't know. Is there a county ordinance? No, there is no county noise ordinance. Okay. What's the city ordinance? Is it 10? And then there's 11 on the weekend? Okay. Okay. I guess that's all of our... What was the consensus on that then? Um, I think city ordinance makes sense. 10? That was my. That was the uh, the conditions that I thought were appropriate to add. I'm leery about making the applicant pick up litter on Slip Up Creek Road when you don't know if it's from his guests or other guests. Uh, and then secondly, I have to agree with you on that one, Scott. Considering they've already said they have an issue with yeah. people throwing mattresses and stuff, I don't feel it's it's appropriate, appropriate to, to make the person at the gate. I don't. And then the other issue was, I don't know how you legislate 
putting, I've never, I don't know how I would word that, that you have to show respect to a funeral procession. And so that, I'm not sure how you would do that. If you would like, you certainly could, but. Um, I would guess personally that the, uh, the applicant could put a sign up for people leaving their site saying, if a funeral procession is in progress, please pause and wait for them to pass or something like that and do it more of a self-managed approach. I think, you're, I think a self-managed approach is fine. I, I just don't want to get into regulating freedom of speech. And you know, you could have, there are groups of people that like to protest funerals and uh, I don't know, I just don't want to, I don't think we should be regulating freedom of speech. Scott, I got just one thing. Uh, do we want to put anything in there about dust control? Uh, if you did, um, <coughs> you could. Yeah, I, you it could make that a G, but isn't it, it wasn't a condition of his driveway permit. Or yeah, Scott. Yeah. I think that was already that a condition, was. wasn't it, with, with Mapleton Township? Township? We like that. Yes, we yeah. oh, okay. agreed to that. It would be, it would be Let's put that in as G. Fighting. Okay. You could put it in as dust G. Control. But then I, you need to be specific on what, where the dust control from his driveway to the pavement to the pa to the pavement is that where you want it mm -hmm. okay. to the west from his driveway west to the pavement mm -hmm. dust control yep. okay we'll add that as a G then if, if it's paved then that would imply that the dust control is being done Anything else? <coughs> Thanks, Scott. Madam Chair, I would uh, propose uh, approval of the <coughs> staff recommendations with the addition of D, E, F, and G added as uh, uh, to sub, uh, sub area A. You're doing A and B or A, B, and C? Um, well, I was going to do uh, staff recommendations on A, B, and C, which are approval, approval, and denial. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that uh, we approve this item with uh, adding uh, no parking on Slip Up Creek to item three and then D, E, and F, and G as discussed. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Pass the request. Thank you. So this, uh, this item, Just so the audience knows, this item will be heard by the Joint City County Commission at February 26th at 5 p.m. And that's at the Car Carnegie Town Hall. So. Thanks, Scott. Uh, there is no old business. There's no new business. Need a motion to adjourn. 5 p.m. Move adjournment of our Joint City County uh, uh, Planning Commission. I'll second. All in favor on the county side? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Second. Second. First and second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Adjourn. Sure.